Okay. Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. And we are here, God's Remnant, together at God's Church of Love online. So I hope that these words will lift your spirits and encourage you and challenge you. We also have a lot of testimonies that we shared right before this, and that will be coming up right after the word. So stay tuned, you guys. God bless you as you hear the word. We are going to read, starting at verse 1, For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Ceased from sin. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sin. Verse 10, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God is that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> I got to read these next two only because with gifts comes challenges, new levels, new devils. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. Mm. All right, stopping right there. Now listen, I said all that because I included it, because God is preparing us. He is equipping us to be used by his hand. He wants a heavy anointing on us. He wants us to be clean vessels. He wants us to be strong because life comes with challenges. Life comes with obstacles. Life comes with demonic attacks. Life comes with setbacks. Life comes with hurt feelings and all of the above, including a whole lot that I don't have time to mention. Will challenge your faith. All of the above will at times make you want to turn tail and run. But God wants you to stand your ground. Because he is building you up on the inner man. And in order for you to be strong enough to handle the challenges that will come with your destiny that God's preparing you for and equipping you for, you have to be able to handle the little problems that now seem insurmountable. And you have to handle them with the right attitude. And when you handle them with the right attitude, you will find that people out there that you work with, people you go to school with, people you go to church with, people in your family, your neighbors, etc., will 
look at you sideways, expecting you to show your narrow behind, or in my case, your wide behind. But the bottom line is they will expect you to act ugly. They will expect you to lower yourself to their level. And when you don't do it, they will marvel. They will take a second look at your claim to Christ. And that is what you want them to do. Because seeing is believing. And if they can't see God, baby, they got to see God somehow. You may be the only Bible they read. You may be the only gospel they see demonstrated in front of them. And that's why God will be glorified through you. And God is preparing you. He has equipped you. He has gifted you with callings, giftings, talents, abilities, strengths. He has given you so much. Everything you need is already in you. But there is a thing called preparation. And while you are preparing, you are not only preparing for the thing God has called you to do or many things he's called you to do. He is also preparing you to be able to handle the storms, the winds, the rain, the obstacles, the lies, the rejection, the hurts. Yeah, they don't stop. They don't stop coming. Why? Not because God is mean, not because God is a hard task master, but because this world is cursed with sin. And because it is sin, full of sin, and man is born in sin and shapen in iniquity, things go wrong. Things go bump in the night. Things scare you, intimidate you, hurt you, frustrate you, make you angry. Things happen. Life happens. Now, what you do with it this determines how soon you get to your destiny or how slow your progress is, if any. You see what I'm saying? So when you know that your progress seems to be going extremely slow, then you have to go to God and say, Lord, show up, show me the Holy Spirit mirror and let me see if I'm handling things in a way that does not please you. Because I don't want this to drag out any longer than necessary. If you are a normal human being with a, a, a level of sanity, you don't like going through trials. You don't like having your feelings hurt. You don't like being challenged. You don't like when things are hard to accomplish. You don't like having to strain to gain. Yeah, we get that. But when you go to your source, and you stick that plug in the outlet and say, God, empower me now because I'm falling real short. God loves that. He's ready, willing, instantly able to give you the grace you need to go through. To go through the fire without being burned. To go through the water without being drowned. Do you hear what I'm saying? With, you can go through the graveyard, the valley of the shadow of death, and it will not harm or kill you. Now, all of this is part of the process. I know you hear me wear that word out. It wears me out sometimes. But the process is a necessary evil in the holy life of God. So what I want you to think about is when life brings its challenges, and it will, that's not prophecy. It just happens to be a matter of fact. When people hurt your feelings, and they will, that's not prophetic. It's a matter of fact. It comes with the package called life. When people betray you, turn their back on you, abandon you, and the list goes on there ad infinitum, you have to be determined. You have to have a pit bull's attitude to feed your faith and your strength through the source, which is God. You have to go to the source. He is your strength when you are weak. 
His strength is made perfect in your weakness. He has the grace for you to love when your flesh wants you to hate. He has the power for you to take authority when you want to be intimidated, run and turn tail and escape. He will teach you and make you and strengthen you to stand. And when you've done all to stand, you will stand with your loins girt about with truth. You will be fortified. You will be strengthened. You will be filled with faith, hope, and determination that comes only from the Holy Spirit. So knowing that, knowing that, keep your eyes focused on the finish line for you right now. Your finish line, we're not talking about heaven. We're not talking about escaping hell. We're dealing with what's happening right here in the land of the living, in this sinful and perverse generation. What you have to do is focus on your finish line. What is your finish line? The next level. The next level that takes you to your destiny. You have to run from here to there. And you have to jump hurdles and you have to run around detours and you have to be delayed and hindered and stopped. And you have to deal with all of that to the best of your ability, or shall I say, to the best of God's ability. With the right attitude, with love, with mercy, with forgiveness, kindness, patience, temperance, self-control. And when you're able to do all that, your reward comes more quickly. They come closer together. When you are more determined to handle things in your flesh, what you end up doing is you have opened the door. You have unlocked the door that God had locked. And the demons can come and flood. Floods and hordes and, and, and swarms of demons can come in and jack your stuff up. So you don't want to do that. You have to keep, see, keeping the right attitude is not for them. Keeping the right attitude is not for them. Keeping the right attitude is, uh, is not so you can get more money. Keeping the right attitude, staying close to God, staying prayerful, forgiving when you want to kick butt, forgiving instead. Praying when you want to cuss somebody out. All of that adds to your character. It adds to your spiritual muscle that Rashad mentioned earlier in his testimony. It adds to your character building, to your ability to love God's way, the agape way rather than the human way. I like you because you like me. I love you because you love me. You scratch my back, I scratch your back. That's human. You jack me up, I jack you up. That's human. God, you stab me in the back, I will still be a blessing to you if I see you in need. You tell a lie on me, I will still forgive you, even though you could care less how it hurt me. See, that's God. God has a whole new level. He says, my ways are above your ways. My thoughts above your thoughts. We can't fathom until we start walking in him, until we start reading his word, till we are filled with his Holy Spirit and we surround ourselves with the people of God and we pray, 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 and we obey, obey, obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. you got to trust that his righteousness will get you there quicker than your sly, slick, and evil scheming. you got to trust that truth in God will get you there quicker than your lies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've got to trust and obey. And when you do that, every step of the way, and yes, we all trip over our own feet at times, and we blow it, and something flies out of our mouth, or an attitude flies out of left field, but we get that in check real quick. 
Yes, we all fall short of the glory of God, but we don't live on short street, do we? No. We get it together, straighten ourselves up real quick. Forgive me, Lord. I may not be sorry. I meant what I said, but Lord, forgive me and help me to ask them to forgive me as well, even though they were wrong and they got on my nerves and they caused me to do it. I still made the choice to do it and that was not the way you would have handled it. So help me go to them and make it right. All of that is part of growth, messing up and cleaning up your own mess. So not blaming everybody else, taking responsibility for your own action. See, God is looking for leaders. Are you a leader or are you a follower? If you're a leader, you have to take the reins, baby. If you can't control your own spirit, your own mouth, your own attitude, how is God going to have you lead anything or anybody else? All right. Now, so I hope that you get how we are to prepare and how we are to stay in God's face and humble, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. He will raise you up. Promotion cometh from God, not from you, not from all your conniving and scheming. It comes from God, not through manipulation. Only what you do for God will last. Now, I ask you, are you willing to take it on the chin so that God can take you all the way in? God bless you. God keep you. God cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace in the name of Jesus. <laughs>